So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix a failing Shopify dropshipping store. If your store isn't living up to expectations, if you're not seeing the sales that you're hoping to see and you're just funneling hundreds, if not thousands of pounds into it and just not seeing the return, then obviously there's a problem somewhere. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to find that problem, but most importantly, how to fix it. So to do this, it all starts with the customer buying process. So I've put together this handy infographic which takes us through the whole purchase process that a customer goes through at each stage I'm going to take you through the numbers the kind of ballpark figures which you need to be aiming for in order to successfully go past that step if you like and if your store doesn't qualify then that in itself will show where the problem lies but we'll go through the infographic and all will become a lot more clear so at the very top then we have obviously the customer itself on their mobile phone they're scrolling through Facebook through Instagram whatever platform it may be that you're advertising on and the first step of the purchase process is they come across your Facebook ad. So at this point, what you need to do is have your ads manager up in a separate tab and be comparing it against the numbers in which I'm going to take you through now. So obviously the first thing that happens is they see your Facebook ad and then they decide whether to stop and watch it or whether they click on it or watch it or engage it. And depending on how that person reacts to your ad is going to influence the data in your ad account. So as for a couple of kind of ballpark numbers, now, I need to strongly make it clear here that these are just ballpark numbers based on my own experience. I've run in Facebook ads for the past six years to many different audiences in many different niches. It's going to be impossible to give you an exact number without knowing your full situation, your full business, so on and so forth. So there will be a piece of information, a piece of data in your ads manager called a CPM. This stands for cost per 1000 impressions. It's basically how expensive it is to advertise to your target audience and this is directly reflected or influenced by what your quality rankings your quality scores will be from Facebook so if your Facebook ad is getting a CPM of somewhere between sort of 10 and 20 pounds then in my opinion the CPM is okay you can definitely make that work and you can definitely progress on to the next step if you're also getting average plus so that's average or better quality scores if you go into the actual ad creative itself facebook will give you quality rankings and facebook will score them below average average or above average i think there's a couple of extras as well if they're really bad or really good but basically what these scores indicate are whether your facebook ad is doing its job basically if you've got really poor and really low and you're kind of in the below average for your quality rankings then your cpm is probably going to be expensive because the two are linked together if you put out a really poor quality ad that your audience just isn't enjoying, in return, Facebook is going to give you expensive data because it doesn't want to push poor quality ads out to its users because otherwise people will stop using Facebook. So they reward people who have good quality ads that customers, that viewers, that their users of the platform like to engage with. So if you've compared these numbers against the numbers that you're achieving in your ads manager and they're just way off, you've got below average quality scores, you've got CPMs of 40, 50 pounds, then essentially you need to change one of two things or maybe even both of these things. And that is the audience, i.e. your customers, so the people that you put on your ad in front of, or number two is you need to change up your creative. You need to make it more engaging so that when people are scrolling through their social media, they actually stop and watch it. And they are the two things in which you need to do further testing on to try and get your CPM lower and try and increase those quality rankings. So if you're all good up to this point, your quality rankings are average or better and your CPM is somewhere between sort of 20, 10 and 20 pounds, then the next step is a customer clicking your ad and going to your Shopify store. The two most important pieces of criteria at this point are your CPC link. It's important that you choose the link one. There are two ones, the CPC all. We are interested in the CPC link. Same goes for CTR. So this is click through rate. You can have a CTR link and you can have a CTR all. It's important that you go for link because link is a lot more valuable than all. A click is anywhere on the ad, whereas link is somebody has intentionally click the link on your ad to leave Facebook and go to your Shopify store. So the numbers we're looking for at this point is a CPC link of less than a pound and a CTR link of 1.5% or better. I like to go a bit higher on the CTR if I can, try and get it as close to 2% if not above 2%. If you can get it above 2%, you're doing a really good job. So 
at this point, these are the benchmark numbers that you're aiming for if your ads are performing within these. So you're getting CPC links for 40 pence and you're getting a CTR link of say over 2%, then I'm happy with whatever you're doing on Facebook. It's doing its job and it's getting cheap traffic onto your store. Assuming I should say actually that you are running conversion campaigns. If you're running traffic campaigns, then your numbers are gonna be well within this and super, super cheap. These need to be website conversion campaigns. If you're not achieving these parameters and you're way off, your clicks are like three pounds, your CTR is like 0.5%, then you need to go up a step. You need to go back to where we've just come from. You need to play around with your ad. You need to make it more engaging and potentially a new product, do something that's gonna capture your customer's attention even more to get them to stop, watch your ad, and click on it. You may even need to change up the audience as well. It may be that you have a really good product, a really good ad, but you're just not putting it in front of the right people. So make sure you go out there and test some new audiences. Assuming then if you've got this far and you're up to this point and you've got really cheap link clicks, you've got a really high CTR link, the next piece of data which you need to consider is the add to cart rate. If you go into your Shopify dashboard and I think it's called reporting um, in the top left hand side, you'll be able to see exactly what your add to cart rate is. A decent Shopify store will convert anywhere between five and 10%. What this means is that if you get 100 people on your store, five to 10% of those people will hit the add to cart button. So somewhere between sort of five and 10 people. Again, this is a really difficult number to really point, to really pinpoint down um, because it depends on so many things like what niche you're in, what kind of audience you're tagged in, how much money they have, how expensive the product is. I've had stores which will have add to cart rates of 15%. I've had stores which will have add to cart rates of sort of three or 4%. So as a general kind of ballpark figure, if you can get it somewhere between five and 10%, preferably higher, towards that 10%, closer towards that 10%, then you've got a really good chance of making um, your store and your business work. If you're achieving these numbers, then so far so good, you can move on to the next step, which we'll go over in a second. But this is where most people fall foul of. Um, if you're not achieving that add to cart rate of somewhere between five and 10%, people are on your Shopify store at this point, and this is where the process is breaking down. And therefore this is where the problem is. The problem lies on the page in which you are sending your customers to. I'm assuming it's gonna be the product page, the products that you've advertised, which you're sending people straight to. So there's something on that page which isn't converting your customers, um, isn't converting your visitors into customers. So there's so many things, too many things to mention. I'll probably do a video later on down the line about how to set up your product pages. It could be the images you're using, it could be the spelling mistakes, there could be Chinese logos, there could be you've got it too cheap, you've got it too expensive, the variants are too confusing. Um, it could be the way you've named your product, it could be that your product description is is poor, it doesn't take people through a funnel, it doesn't answer questions about the products people are hoping for. There could be so many different things, but if you're not achieving that ads cut rate of five to 10%, that is where you need to focus your attention. You need to learn more about how to set up um, optimized product pages. If you're still with me and so far so good, most people, if they can get past this add to cart point, they don't have any issues further on because um, the whole kind of default checkout process that Shopify has built into their um, themes and their platform is, is pretty decent. So you shouldn't have any issues up to this point. But again, the process is the same. So the amount of people that go from add to cart to actually initiating checkout should be about 50% of those. So if you get 20 people adding to cart, it should be 50% and above, I should say. So if you're getting 20 people A to C, you should be getting at least 10 of those um, are initiating checkout. And once they're in the checkout, they're in that default process Shopify supplies. Um, which is as good as any other. If you're not getting people which are initiating checkout and this is where the process is breaking down, then there's something on your cart page which is putting them off. Are you telling people they have to pay for shipping when they think it's free? Are you telling people they have to pay taxes when they're not a business? Again, this is where you need to focus your attention. If there's a massive breakdown here, you need to go back a step and focus your attention there. Finally, then we have the successful purchase. So again, this is a really difficult one to really pinpoint down, but any store which can convert over 2% should be making a profit as long as they're doing what we've spoken about earlier, meeting those benchmark numbers. That's what everybody should be aiming for, a Shopify store which converts at least 2%. Um, preferably, if you're running direct marketing like Facebook ads, then somewhere 
closer to 5%. But again, it's going to vary massively depending on how expensive your product is, what audience you're going for, what platform, so on and so forth. With that being said then guys, that is how fundamentally how you break down any failing Shopify store, how you more importantly or most importantly, the first step is identifying where the problem is. Hopefully I've helped you with that in this video. And then most importantly, um, putting a plan of action in to fix whatever that problem is. Educate yourself, um, go to Shopify groups and ask for advice, change things around, run split tests, whatever it is. Keep making those tweaks, keep monitoring the information, the data, um, and as long as that data gets better and better and better, then you know you're on the right path. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and drop a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.